It's Christmas Day 2019 and welcome to a Stuart Models Beam Engine Rebuild. This is part 12, assembling and mounting the beam and bearings. In a normal steam engine, the crankshaft alignment is possibly the most vital thing, but with a beam engine you have the added problem of the beam. And here we have the beam. There is no way of fastening the beam to the cross shaft. It just pushes in there and the beam is free to wobble about. This is not good engineering practice, so what I'm going to do is drill a hole in the beam. And I've already shown that at one side of the beam there's a thicker part to allow this to happen. I don't have a drawing for this engine, I'm just guessing that that's what that part's for. After making a mark on the beam using a Sharpie felt tip pen, first of all I drilled it with a centre drill part way down, then all the way through using a twist drill that is tapping size for a 6BA thread which I think was 2.3 millimetres. I actually used a number drill and I can't remember the number of it. Either way, the hole in the beam is the correct size to allow me to thread it using a 6BA tap. And now it's been threaded and withdrawing the tap and it's time to put a groove screw in there. When tapping holes in components like this, you really have to be careful. Even if you don't break off the tap as it goes into the hole, sometimes you can break it off as you withdraw it from the hole, and it definitely breaks off if you drop the entire assembly on the floor. And yes, I've done that as well. Time now to clean up the beam. First of all, I'm removing the Sharpie felt tip pen mark with some Scotch Brite. And in this clip, I'm using some wet or dry sandpaper to clean up the edge of the beam where I caught it with the paintbrush. In this clip, I'm sliding the cross shaft in place. Now, where did I put my Allen key? Aha, here it is. I'm tightening the grub screw in place, and you notice it's a very long grub screw. It doesn't need to be this long, it's just one I had in a box of very long grub screws. And here is a shot of the completed beam. This is the top of the beam, so obviously you can't see the grub screw. Time now, without further ado, to reassemble the bearings. These bearings are not quite the same as the ones I normally come across. Usual steam engine bearings are split entirely, including the bearing itself. And this allows for adjustment with the bearing in situ without removing anything other than the top cap and the top part of the bearing. On a model steam engine though, it's just as easy to replace the entire bearing when it wears. I need to make sure that these bearings are clamped in place firmly. And by using a 6BA brass bolt in the oil hole in the centre and a small hammer, I can gently tap the top bearing cap in place. Here are the main top bearings for the beam. I fitted the oil cups into the centre hole and the entire top caps are held to the bottom part using 6BA hexagon bolts. In this clip I'm cleaning up the faces of the bearing bushes because I got some paint on them and they just look a bit better cleaned up. Really I should have done this job before fitting the bearings back into the plumber blocks but I do like to live life on the edge. All I have to do now is fit the completed beam with its cross shaft and bearings to the top of the column. And to do this I've decided to use two BA bolts which are one size smaller. By one size smaller it doesn't mean that the threads are one size smaller, it's just the size of the head. When I first looked at this beam engine before I started the series, the reason I decided to do a series using this particular beam engine was for the reason that you see here. Can you see what the problem is? The builder of this engine had great difficulty drilling the holes in the correct place at the top of the column to mount the bearings. And for me to find out the extent of the problem, I'm going to mount the bearings anyway, even though they're not in a good position on top of this column. I need to see how far out things are before I rectify the problem. I bought this old beam engine a while back, along with quite a few other steam engines. I didn't really want these steam engines, so I made a video about the fact that I wanted to sell them, as the video went on Patreon for starters, the engines were quickly sold to some of my Patreon supporters because, as you know, the videos go on Patreon before they become public. This was one of the engines, but I didn't sell this one because I didn't feel it was fair to sell an engine with so many problems like this one. And that's why I put it on one side, and that's why I'm making a series about how to rectify the problems. I shortened four 2BA bolts, and one of the bearing blocks is now bolted in position on top of the column. It's time now to fit the beam, followed by fitting the other bearing. 
I had to slacken off the bearing at the other side to allow me to put the bearing at this side in place, but eventually the bearing at this side of the beam was ready to be bolted down. What I'm about to do now is just bolt the second bearing on top of the column. You have to be really careful when you're doing a job like this because I'm working with fairly freshly painted parts and you can't force anything. If you do, you will mark the paint. As it turns out, I haven't marked the paint because I'm being very careful. My physical appearance resembles that of a silverback gorilla, but thankfully I have a very delicate touch. And for many years of doing jobs like this, I have infinite patience where jobs like this are concerned. Not so with other aspects of my life, but that is the way it is. Here's a quick tip. This bolt was not going into the hole at a good angle. I don't know why, probably because the thread isn't very good in the top of the column. If I'd have carried on tightening this unsupported bolt, there was a good chance it would have cross-threaded. The solution, I put my finger on top of the bolt and held it firmly in position until it got sufficiently down into the hole that it became straight. The more experience that you have working on small models makes jobs like this almost automatic. And that's it for this episode. I cannot really add any more. Later on today, as it is Christmas Day 2019, I look forward to my Christmas dinner. Thank you for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.